In this video, I want to discuss the first two predicate logic decomposition rules. And these are negated existential decomposition and negated universal decomposition. So as a kind of preliminary, let's let this symbol for phi right here stand for any predicate logic well-formed formula, including n place predicates followed by n terms. So this would include statements like, you know, P X if P was a one place predicate or R X Y if R was a two place predicate. So the rule for negated existential decomposition, which is the decomposition rule that applies to formulas where the main operator is the negation and the operator with the next most amount of scope is the existential quantifier is as follows. If we have a negated existentially quantified formula, we can decompose it in terms of a universally quantified formula that ranges over phi. So this formula right here, phi, is down here, except for now, and the negation that was originally on the outside right here is now on the inside of the universal quantifier. The idea here is we're replacing or decomposing this negated existentially quantified expression with a universally quantified expression that ranges over the negated phi. So we're replacing this formula right here with one that's equivalent to it. When I say equivalent to it, I mean these two formulas are true and false under the same conditions. That is, for example then, a uh, so sort of application of this rule is, if we had not ex px, we could decompose this formula right here, that is give a, represent the conditions under which it's true in terms of an equivalent formula, which is ax not px. And we would indicate that we applied negated existential decomposition to let's say line one here, using the negated existential decomposition rule. One more example, let's say we had not ex r x x so we have a two place predicate r applying negated existential decomposition would give us a x not r x x so essentially all we're doing with negated existential decomposition is replacing one formula with it, one that's equivalent to it but we're just simply swapping out this not ex with this ax negation. So we're leaving this rxx alone, but we're just replacing this not ex with ax negation. The second predicate logic decomposition rule is negated universal decomposition. Again, we'll let phi, this little symbol phi right here, stand for any predicate logic well-formed formula including n place predicates followed by n terms. So again, this is a slight simplification, but it'll work for explaining the rule. So negated universal decomposition applies to formulas where the main operator is the negation and the operator with the next most amount of scope is the universal quantifier. So in the case of negated universal decomposition, we represent the condition under which this particular formula is true in terms of an existentially quantified formula that ranges over the negation of phi. So again, we're replacing a, the negated universally quantified formula here with one that is its equivalent to. These two things say the same thing in a sense, but they say it in a different way. So to give you one example, let's say we had not a x not px. Applying negated universally decom universal decomposition to this formula, so not a d, would give us e x not not p x. So all we're doing right here is replacing this negated universal quantifier with a existential quantifier. We're leaving this not p x alone and we're replacing the negated universal quantifier with the existential quantifier that, that now ha ranges over the negation of not px. 
So let's look at an example where both negated universal decomposition and negated existential decomposition are applied. So suppose we start with two formulas in our tree. That is, we have not AXPX and not EYRYY. So these are the propositions we are going to evaluate the truth conditions of using our tree method. Since we see that line one is a negated universally quantified formula, we can apply negated universal decomposition to that line one. And so we decompose line one using the negated universal decomposition rule. And this gives us EX not PX. Again, we're simply replacing this not AX with EX negation right here. And we can check this formula off to indicate that we have fully decomposed this formula. That is, we fully represented the conditions under which this particular formula, line one, is true in terms of line three. Now at line two, we have a negated existentially quantified formula. And so we can apply the negated existential decomposition rule to line two. Applying the negated existential decomposition rule to line two gives us AY not RYY. That is the universally quantified not RYY. So again, what we're doing is replacing this negation and the existential quantifier with the universal quantifier that now ranges over not RYY. 